Today, we're talking about punch channel and how you can avoid three most common mistakes that are usually made when people start using punch channel. Now, the first mistake to avoid is, well, just ordering the wrong material. Now, you would think that because most railing projects have to have their pickets on four inch centers that you would be ordering punch channel with the holes every four inches. But that's not exactly true. Yes, for all of your straight sections, you're gonna want your pickets to be on four inch centers, so you're gonna order that four inch centered punched channel, but that's not the case when it comes to down rails because the spacing is actually gonna be a little bit different when you pair it with that four inch centered straight section. So an easy way to think about this is if you have one long straight section and you just kind of cut part of it and then you angle part of it down, those straight pickets, the distance between them is actually shortening. So they're gonna get a little bit closer together. So if you were to have the same four inch centered punch channel there, it wouldn't look right. Your spacing would be off. Your down rail is always just gonna be one inch higher than whatever your straight rail is. Man, this is really getting hard for me to say. So when ordering your material, you're gonna order one specific size for all your straight sections and you're gonna order another size for your down rail. So the second most common mistake is in the measuring and cutting of the material. Now, when you have a regular piece of channel or tubing or whatever that doesn't have any holes punched in it, you just put your tape measure on one end, you draw your line and you cut. That's all there is to it. That's not the case when you have punch channel. You have all of these holes you have to take into consideration. You have to make sure that all of your holes line up so you have straight pickets. Otherwise, everything is gonna be cattywampered. Yes, I said cattywampered. Now, I found the fastest and easiest way to keep all the holes lined up when cutting is to just shrink wrap two pieces of channel together and I just cut them together and always keep them together on the table so I know that those two pieces go together because you're always gonna have a top and a bottom. Another little detail to remember in the cutting is trying to make sure that you have all of your spacing in all of these different sections congruent. You don't want the spacing to be off, which is real easy to do if you're not paying attention to where you're making your cuts in line with the holes that are been punched in the channel. Now, in order to make this work, you're gonna have to make some extra cuts on those pieces of channel, but the end result of the project is gonna look so much better having that nice even spacing. You know, one of the great thing about having a resource like King is there's there so many different components and designs and sizes and types of material to work with, but that's also where you can get into a lot of trouble if you get all excited about your design and you're picking cool components and cool balusters and cool pickets and you don't pay attention that some of them might be the different sizes, which is what I have been guilty of. So that takes away a lot of the time that I was planning on saving. I'm gonna have to cut those pickets or grind them to get them into those slots. And it just, it's a pain in the butt, it's what it is. So in the design process, you wanna make sure that you're, you're using the right size material to fit in that punch channel. All right guys, that's it for this one. Hope this helps you avoid some of these common mistakes when using punch channel. Look, punch channel is amazing. It is a lifesaver. It will save you so much time and effort in your production process, but only if you avoid these mistakes that we covered today. All right guys, see you next time. Go punch some channel. Go punch some channel. <sighs> I'm sorry.